So let's start with large networks. But before we do that, an overview of deep learning and especially gradient descent algorithms. I'm gonna start with that. There are a couple of ways to think about deep learning. And this comes from the perspective of different people. If you are a statistician, you think of deep learning as uh, feature extractors. You have an image, you want to featureize. You have a text, you want to come up with a bunch of features. So that's how a statistician thinks. An applied mathematician is gonna look at the deep learning, deep neural networks and say, this, these are just universal function approximators. I have a function, I want to approximate it. So they think of it in terms of basis functions. If you ask a computer scientist, and especially the people who work in Silicon Valley, they're gonna tell you that uh, a deep neural network is, an, is the mother of all algorithms, is a mother algorithm. But what is an algorithm? How do you write an algorithm from a computer science perspective? Let's say you have a C code and you usually write a source code. You say, I want my source code, for instance, to print hello. Then you give that source code to a compiler. The compiler is gonna compile that source code for you and it's gonna output an executable file. For instance, a .exe file or .o output. Then you can just uh, use that output file in production. That's gonna give you an algorithm. That's gonna give you a software that you can sell to your customers. And that's how people think about deep learning. It's an algorithm that writes another algorithm. So it's a mother algorithm. And an algorithm that writes an algorithm is a compiler. So do you see my mouse? Yes. Perfect. So deep learning is just a compiler. What is the source code then? The source code is gonna be your data. You have input output data in the form of examples. Now you don't write the source code yourself anymore. It's just the data. Or your data could be in the form of experiences if you're doing reinforcement learning. You have an agent that's interacting with the environment collecting experiences over time, and then that's gonna be your data. So you don't write your source code anymore. But what you have to do is write your compiler. Say what type of models I want to use. How I want to compile, how I want to compile that model against the data. And then in the end, you get a deployable model. For instance, let's say you want to have a spam detector. Is this email and a spam or not? That's a classification task. You're gonna say, my source code is a bunch of data. This is my email. The corresponding label is spam. This is another email the corresponding label is not a spam. And you collect millions of data points. Input, output pairs. Those are your ex examples. And as you can see, that's a hard task to write the code for it. How are you gonna identify whether something is on spam because your features, what are your features? Uh, what type of words? if you see in an email 
that's going to be on the spot or not on the spot. So that, that's a tough task. That's why classical uh, computer science techniques are not applicable here. Then you compile it using your deep learning techniques. And in the end, you get a model. You get an executable code that you can put it in production. Then you add that model as another set of features to your, for instance, Gmail account. So that's what Google does. And then any emails that come in, they're gonna be either in your spam folder or not a spam folder. But now you're using that model in production. That model, it's a statistical model. It's gonna make mistakes. But given the difficulty of the task, there is no other choice other than using a statistical techniques. So there is this parallel between source code, compilers, and executable codes, and deep learning. So deep learning, think of it as your compiler. So let's break down the words deep learning. What does deep mean? Deep means you have a bunch of function compositions. So you are composing functions. You have x, then you have f1 of x, then you apply on that F2 of X and so on. And you keep doing that up until you get L. And if you think about it, we do the same thing when we write our codes, our source codes. We write a function, we break down our source code into simple functions. Uh, the input goes in, we do some transformations on it. That's gonna be F1 using some function that we write. Then we take the output of that pipeline and put it inside another function and keep doing that. Until the end, we just, I don't know, print the results or do something nice in our source code. But now the cool thing about deep learning is that these functions, you don't have to write them yourself. F1, you just give it the structure of the family of the functions that could happen. And then it's the role of training to find out what is F1, what is F2. So you don't write your own source code. And what is learning in deep learning? For learning, you have to define a loss function. Basically how much error your predictions or your model is making compared to the ground truth, which are your training data, your examples. Deep learning without backpropagation wouldn't exist. And backpropagation is a way of taking derivatives of your loss functions with respect to the parameters of your models. And once you have the gradients, you can do gradient descent to optimize your loss function. And once you optimize your loss function, you're gonna end up with an executable code. But whenever you end up with an executable code, you cannot just take it and put it into production because then your customers are gonna be really unhappy if your algorithm makes mistakes and you're gonna lose customers. That's why you have some test data. You first test your algorithm and make sure it is working correctly. This test data, you don't see it when you're doing the training. Algorith the algorithm doesn't see it. But once you are happy with your algorithm, it's doing a good job on your test data, it's ready to be put into production. So first you need to test your algorithms, make sure there are no bugs or anything. And usually, 
uh, as I said, the source code for deep learning is your data. If your algorithm is doing something not correct, you have to go back to your data and see what's wrong in your data. Maybe there are some outliers in your data. Maybe you have to clean your data. Maybe you have to add some new observations to your data set and then retrain your model. So the source code is our data. We have to take a close look at our data. Data is what's driving deep learning. So our compiler is the only algorithm that you write. The rest of it is gonna be written on itself. And that's the only algorithmic uh, way of thinking. And this is the only slide in the rest of the course where we are actually writing an algorithm. We think about the source code. For the rest of the class, except for this slide, we never write algorithms. The data writes the algorithm itself. 